Welcome back, folks. I am Technivorous. Today we are checking out Prusa Slicer once again. This is an amazing slicer. If you haven't tried it out yet, I definitely recommend it. This is going to be the first time today that we have run it on the TiVo Tarantula Pro. So we are going to throw a model on here, get everything all set up. As you can see, I already entered my print settings. So that's basically the build size and basic filament settings. Uh, and I will have to go in and adjust all those as we add a model. So let's get into it now. All right, here I am in Prusa Slicer. I have grabbed my model and imported it, and as you can see, it is ridiculously tiny. So let's go ahead and adjust the scale. We want to unlock the scale, and we are basically going to add a zero to every side. And there we have it, our mini me. This is a model I made in Blender, sculpting, and pretty simple. Not the best, but uh, not the worst. Um, so, basically from here we're going to need to do a couple of things to get this set up to print on the TiVo. Now I know the print settings are correct, so let's jump over to the filament settings. And as you can see, there are quite a few things in here. This doesn't matter, color, it's just the representation color in the slicer. I think I'm going to be using some yellow today, so let's change it to yellow. Uh, yeah, that'll be alright. Let's do yellow. Uh, Basically, the diameter is your filament diameter, 1.75. That's not going to change for any of my machines at the moment. Um, and then you have your filament temperatures. And these were set when you set up your printer. It sets the basic temperatures here, uh, and we're going to leave those. Let's go check out cooling. Uh, Auto-enable cooling, we want that on. And the fan speed settings are all fine here. So... Uh, advanced filament type PLA it is not solu soluble so we're not checking that um, and then there are some other settings in here uh, these are advanced settings but some things that you may want to come in and adjust after we get a first print and see how things are going down custom G code uh, this is filament specific G code I don't have anything to put here so we're gonna leave it and notes and dependencies will be left alone as well uh, let's go to printer settings now and we are in the general section. This is all set as well um, in your main setup, the bed shape, but the height isn't set in there, so I needed to adjust that. It is a one extruder, and you can. there's some settings here for Octoprint. I don't have that turned on right now, so we're not gonna deal with that. Um, custom G-code. So home all accesses, lift nozzles. We don't have a purge line in here, uh, and I don't generally need one on my TiVo Tarantula Pro. It runs pretty well. So, machine limits. These are your speed limits, maximum feed rate, things like that. The rest of this is pretty well dialed in on its own. You don't really need to mess with it. We're going to go back to print settings here. This is your main print settings page. So, once you've set the filament that you're going to be using and the printer that you're going to be using, this is where you're going to make most of your changes and adjustments. And as you can see, it's got a really high layer height right now, and I don't like that. So we're going to go down to 0.16 and 2 for the first layer. Perimeters 3 will be fine. Solid layer shells, 3 top, 3 bottom. That's fine as well. Seam position, we're going to put in the rear. And... Density and pattern is fine on the infill. There are a lot of different patterns to choose from, and some of them are kind of mesmerizing to watch. So feel free to make your own choice for what you would like to put in for the fill pattern. Uh, next, we're going to do a skirt and brim. Now, uh, you'll notice that a raft is not in here. Okay, that's a different setting back on the platter. Um, let's see. No, nope, I'm missing it. Where is it? Well, we'll get to the raft in just a second. So, uh, basically, the loops for the skirt, it's running one loop, six millimeters away. Uh, interestingly, the skirt height here, uh, in version 2.2, which is the new version, there is now a button that you can click that will make it go to the exact top of the model with the skirt, which basically produces a draft shield which is great for printing ABS we're not gonna mess with that today either and support material we do want to generate support material and it's gonna auto generate uh, and then here is our raft it's in the support material settings we are actually gonna do three raft layers because 
my bed on my TiVo Tarantula Pro is really sticky. So if I don't use a raft, it's almost impossible to get it off. Um, this is your support pattern stuff. Don't really need to adjust any of this. Although this setting down here, support on build plate, you can check that. That'll keep it from touching the model. Um, I do want it off though, because I do want to build a little support on the base of that model to get the chin overhang to print properly. Um, basically, when you're looking through all these settings, it's pretty simple. If you look up here, it shows you the simple settings, the advanced settings, and the expert settings. So if I click simple, it takes away all those red and yellow settings, and these are the ones that I absolutely want to check. Uh, and then if I want to get a little bit more advanced and dial in my details a little bit better, I will move up to the advanced. And then if I want absolute control over everything, which is how I leave it open because sometimes I change some of this stuff, we'll go up to the expert mode. So uh, speed, we are looking pretty good. I could turn this speed perimeter up a little bit, but I'm not going to. I'm going to take the infill down a little bit um, just so it comes out with good quality. First layer speed's pretty normal. Travel. Um, and then max print speed. So this um, is actually set in your print settings as well, but it can be adjusted here. So I'm not going to mess with that right now either. I don't have multiple extruders. Let's see what's in the advanced options. So in here, there is the default extrusion width. Um, you can either set it to millimeters or a percentage, and you're going to want that to be somewhat close to the nozzle value, although slightly over. Um, and also while navigating Prusa Slicer, you can just hover over a lot of these and get a lot of good information about what they do. But you'll see in here there are no, a lot of these have no expert settings. So if I click simple, uh, it takes them away. Basically, these are the four main things that you want to worry about when you're just doing a simple setup. Uh, output options, um, you can print one by one. That's sequential printing. Uh, we don't need to do that either, and we're not going to mess with the post-processing script. So let's go back to our platter, and here we have our model. So, let's go ahead and slice it. should automatically add in our support, and we should be able to get a good look at the preview mode. Yep, there it is, and you can see those support pillars are pretty, pretty heavy duty. Uh, that should be all right. The support interface, which is something we didn't touch on too much because it's advanced in expert settings, um, but that is basically what's going to determine how easily and smoothly it comes away from the model. And as far as the interface skin goes with slicers, Kira, in my opinion, has one of the best interface uh, methods for keeping the model intact without any problems. So we are going to grab the SD card, hit export, and we will throw this on the TiVo T-Pro. Alright, so here we have it. This is our model from Prusa Slicer. It is a little bit on the tiny side. Uh, the support is, like I said, super easy to remove. It comes off just like that. Uh, I'm going to use the clippers to clear up a couple little parts in here. Like underneath the chin. Get that support piece out of there. And then the piece underneath the ear over here as well. Not a lot of cleanup to do, but a little bit. And of course, the raft has got to come off, which went down very shoddily to my disappointment. But that, I think, was a filament thing, so. And there we have it. So I know this is hard to see. Let me get a couple of pictures and we'll throw them up on the screen here. And that's going to be it for our little foray into Prusa Slicer with the TiVo Tarantula Pro. The model came out pretty nice. I uh, don't think I'm going to need to adjust too many of the settings. I'm actually very pleased with this. Um, I think the model could use a little bit more cleanup, but for the most part, like I said, the support interface on, on uh, Prusa Slicer is amazing. So it never ceases to amaze me how easily they just peel away and how good it looks underneath. Thanks for stopping by, guys. If you'd like to see more Prusa Slicer videos, leave me a comment down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave a like on this video. Also, ring that notification bell so you can be kept up to date with the latest and greatest of new releases from Technivorous channel. 
and we post new videos pretty much every weekday, sometimes more than once. So if you don't want to miss anything, make sure you ring that bell. Thanks, guys. And that's going to be it, guys. Thanks for stopping by. If you'd like to become a Technivore, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. And YouTube's suggesting a video for you right here. And there's a playlist right here that's just 3D printing stuff. Also, if you'd like to see your name up top with the rest of my Patreon supporters, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. There, YouTube can contribute to the channel and make the Technivorous channel even better.